Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. Welcome everybody, I'm glad to have with me today State Representative Matt Hatchett, our dear friend. We talk, well we talk a lot, maybe not on the air every time, which might be a good thing. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> I don't think anybody out there watching now would want to be on camera all the time, but uh, we were at a good event this week. First of all, Matt, uh, Dr. Smith and Frankie Mathis have started a world-class uh, organization over in East Dublin, and I told some of the commissioners, Brian Rogers, some of them, I said, well, welcome to God's country. I'm glad you come on over the river bridge, you know, with us people in East Dublin, but wasn't it a nice occasion? It was great. It was warm, but it was great. It was a huge turnout, yes. which is always how Dublin and yep. Lawrence County, East Dublin, you know, everybody is. That's for, right. And I, and I mentioned yesterday, and you, I know you've seen it and heard it, and you were there, <laughs> but, I mean, it was good news, and we, we're, we're consumed with, the bad things right now. We need good things. We need to focus on the good. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was an awesome announcement. Awesome ribbon cutting. It's an awesome business. And the sky's the limit on what I, th I mean. He's, yeah. he's, you know, he's, he's come upon something that could be huge. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, could change the landscape of this whole middle Georgia. If yeah, it, if when it's, you're turning trash into treasure, really, you know, <laughs> into diesel. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, that's incredible. And, so. and, and happening right here in Lawrence County. Uh, but Matt, you got to admit, we both grew up here. When it's good and something good for our community, even the people that might not like each other will get together and accomplish that goal and then tomorrow go back to maybe not liking each other again. <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, it was just a positive positive everything yesterday. Yeah, and there's a lot of good things what, going on though. Not, I too, mean, not it, too many politicians talk too long, so it was yeah. great. <laughs> well, it was too hot, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> if it had been a nice fall day, y'all probably would have went on uh, and it on. Was, <laughs> it, was, it was a great day. But there are good things going on in our community, in our state. As a matter of fact, the governor was here in town and he drove from Milledgeville, had a great announcement there, right. came to Dublin, another great announcement here, and I don't know where he went from here, but they are, good things going on other than COVID. Right, he mentioned yesterday, which I didn't know, we've had the Department of Economic Development has announced over 2,100 new jobs mm -hmm. coming to Georgia since June the 1st. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't get to hear what the investment was because we all interrupted him yeah. on the 2,100 <laughs> jobs. But I mean, that's, that's awesome yeah. for, for, the, for what's going on in our state, for that, you know, where can people still like Georgia, they still want to come here and, and Companies are buying in. You know, it's a great place to be. Yep, incredible. So. And for the seventh year in a row, Georgia is the number one place to do business. Right. That yeah. is just, that's wonderful. Who knows if we'll make eight because the <laughs> whole world has changed. But, I yeah. mean, th these kind of things and announcements and what's what's happening are, are positive, very positive. Yeah, so. absolutely. But we didn't just, just happen to be the best place to do business. Uh, Y'all worked hard. The Senate worked hard. Governor Deal. Governor Kemp, uh, and, and as the governor said yesterday, he didn't know what he was going to do when he come in to build on the good job that Governor Deal did in office. But if he didn't, he dropped unemployment even more before COVID hit. It already dropped down another couple notches. I was I was at an event with Governor Deal two weeks ago, and he jokingly said, "You know, compared to what I had, I had to deal with <laughs> two ice storms." He said. I can't imagine having to deal with what Governor Kemp is having to yeah. deal with with COVID and you know community relations. Yeah. He said this this is, I, what I had was a you know was a piece of cake. Yeah, but we so never know. My uh, don't know what's we what, don't know what's around the corner. Uh, we just don't know. It's uh, like Hurricane Michael. We're still reeling from that, aren't right, we? I mean, right. there's farmers still hurting. Still, and there. they still don't have the money. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just. And, but y'all did. Terrible. Uh, and I, I got to hand it to you. Y'all came to the rescue pretty quick. Y'all had a, I guess what I'd call an emergency session. We did. 
and approved allocated money and, yeah, and quite we a actually bit of money. we actually had a bill this this session that we finally you know the session that lasted forever um, that that exempts uh, taxes on that money that the farmers get so it's still going on well and you and I know John Barra told me one time former congressman uh, those of you watching you might not know that name but he told me he said James I know this is hard for you to believe living in Dublin but they are people in the halls of Congress in Washington DC that thinks groceries come from the grocery store and if they hadn't attached food stamps to the farm bill they would never get the farm bill passed in Washington but farmers as we know, they are the backbone of our country. Of our state. Uh, yeah. I mean, agriculture is still the yes. number one industry. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. And it's fun to what and, and I know your drive out yesterday, and, and as I drive around Lawrence County to see the, the crops coming up, uh, I was coming from Wrightsville the other day, and to see the soybean fields and the cotton coming along and the. You well, know, the corn, peanuts, look, the corn looks. I mean, corn. far as I tell, looks great. You know, yeah. of course, I don't know what the price. I don't know what it's bringing. Usually, That's when right. they, usually when they have a great crop, the price is not good. But I haven't heard a lot of discussion there. But I mean, it, it's well, I told Claude crop. Graham one time. I was with Mr. Claude, and I said, Mr. Claude, I said, you got the prettiest crop of corn I ever seen. He said, That's not good, James. I don't like pretty corn. I said, What do you mean? He said, Well, when corn's doing good, construction business is terrible. He said, so I want the corn to die. That means it's dry. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. But so it's hard to make us all happy. Isn't it? <laughs> but uh, well, let's talk about uh, this session. It was kind of a weird session. What about the old timers in Atlanta? Have they ever seen anything like, no. forget COVID, but have you ever had a session break up and come no. back in the summer? And no, I, I, I'm sure they probably haven't broken up in the past, but I, I didn't hear that conversation. Mm -hmm. But it... It was the longest session that yeah. we've ever had. So, um, you know, usually it never happens this way because we had to have a budget by July the 1st. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it, it's it's kind of a blessing if you really want, you know, what happened. We had passed the budget for 21, FY21 mm -hmm. uh, and then we left. Well, the economy, you know, tanked and things just, the whole world changed. And it was kind of good that we had that opportunity to see okay how bad is it because if we had gotten out of there and then all this happened we would be back yeah. adjusting the you know adjusting it after the fact so it, it kind of really worked out okay and, and it, you know we the budget was uh, down roughly 10 percent mm -hmm. and that's what it looks like the revenues are going to going to be down looks like they might from what i talked to chairman england the appropriations chairman in the house um, just today's Friday. I think I talked to him Tuesday, and it, it looks like we're actually going to be better off than we thought we were. But so that hopefully we can you know, still help some help some people. So. Well, y'all did something this year. I don't know if I've ever in my 60 years on earth known of a politician to do, and that's cut you on pay. So we, I got to give it to you, brother. I that mean, that was something we, I mean, we just all felt like we had, if we're cutting the whole budget 10%, we got to cut our, you know, our, our pay is determined constitutionally. Mm -hmm. And you can't just do it. Mm -hmm. Even with all the constitutional officers, you can't just do it. You've got to actually, if, we, if it's not voted on, you got to sign a piece of, you know, you got to do yeah. all this stuff. So we, we did it. And it was, it was very uh, interesting to hear the debate and, and listen to some of the debate. And uh, it, um, I'd li like to say that most of the people in my party voted for it and the others in the other party didn't. So it, it, it's, you know, it's not a lot of money. No. Because we don't make a lot of money That's anyway. Right. But, I mean, it, we needed to do it. Yeah. We had to. I mean, well, it, it's. if everybody else is hurting. Right. I mean, it, it's, yeah. we're not immune. Yeah. So. And that's what a good business owner does. Right. And you've been in business for many years. Uh, and you know what I'm talking about. Being in business is. Uh, and I know I've been there, uh, pay everybody else, and I never got a check. You know, you I have had, those times. I had so. several weeks like yeah. that. Uh, but, yeah. or staying up all night Thursday night saying, oh, my gosh, how am I going to make payroll? And I believe uh, I thought that I was those, the only one did that. that. No, I mean, there's people out there watching, I'm sure, I know. Uh, and those are the kind of people we need in Atlanta, we need in Washington that's made payrolls and knows you know, what it's like to get out here and actually live by the laws that are being passed. 
the debate on that, you know, was was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I was shocked, very just totally shocked at that. So, so what do you think? I know it's a close. Uh, isn't it like 105, 75? The, the majority and the minority is, I think is you're that right. kind of close? Yeah, 105, 75. 75. Yeah. Uh, so it's important to vote uh, very. because so many things are just like you're saying this. If the other side wanted to keep the money, your side is arguing, hey, if everybody else is hurting, we got to hurt. We got to cut our pay. And that's just one thing. Um, there's a lot at stake. Right. There's a lot at stake. And we could talk a whole show about that. Yeah. I don't know if you want oh, to get could, into that. Yeah. But I mean, I, and that's part of my role is, is securing the, making sure we keep the majority. And it, it's, you know, we, we're so many factors now that are involved with, with, controlling how people vote from you know national yeah. things going on and and uh so, and just the the atmosphere and, and how people feel and what's going you know what's going on with with our economy and just in general yeah. and, and 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 people vote their emotion mm -hmm. uh and and you know we we've got a lot we're trying to do and and, and i've got one one friend that, that uh, he's in a race right now and, and uh, he's a new, new, new to politics and uh, his opponent has gone negative on him. And uh, he said, you know, he, he's, he's got something that's probably going to drop in the next week that says, you know, my opponent and I, we met after this you know, primary and agreed that we wouldn't go negative on each other. And my word stands. I'm yeah. not going negative on Win, him. So if you want somebody either. that's going to tell you the truth, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's it's you know the, it, the whole we all get tired of the negative, but sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But it, it's going to be it's a long. It's right at I think it's 102 days or 103 days until yeah. elections. It's going to be a long 100 days. Yeah, we're going to hear a lot and see a lot, and you can't believe it all. Yeah, uh, sometimes you can believe some of it, but it, it's. You got to research it yourself and yeah. and, and do what you think's right. Yeah, be an informed um, voter. There's no doubt. Yeah, we saw a lot of things this session, especially the second part of the session, that really were surprising. The act, the actions of some of the members of the of the house. So, you know, last time when President Trump run, the polls told us one thing, and then at three o'clock on that next morning, we saw another thing. Right. You know, pollsters do a sampling and. Uh, I, I saw a survey yesterday come out, and I don't doubt it a bit, but 71% of Republicans are scared to voice their opinion in public. 71% in fear of reprisal from other people. So you figure seven out of 10 people. So with that said, don't you think that a lot of people will not answer questions? Like I, I've gotten a couple calls recently. Uh, I've got a couple this past week. Uh, I don't want to answer how I'm going to vote. Don't you think there that unknown there's a lot of people? people I mean, there's out a lot there? of people that can't be a. They're not. They're not contacted yeah. because they're they're busy. Yeah, know? that's and they, right. And and, and, a lot, and they're you know they see a number come up that they don't know who it is. They're not going to answer it. So, and that's. You know, a lot of the technology with polling has changed. You can get people on their cell phones now. You can email them. You know, right. there there's so many different ways. And, and even, you know, you're going to see an increase in texting uh, yeah. campaigning because, you know, right now with, with the situation we're under still with the, with the pandemic, and, and, you know, you're, you're still, you're not going to see as much person to person, mm -hmm. you know, knocking on doors yeah. and stuff like, you know, you're going to, Technology is really going to be used, and actually, it's it's uh, you can tell the story, you can tell your story, and you you or I can read it when we want to. That's right. Um, and you're not interrupted. Uh, but the most important thing is just just and maybe we'll talk again before November. But is please vote. Yeah, just absolutely. get out and vote. I absolutely. Mean, of course, and you I know we we come from an era, and I had this conversation at the ribbon cutting yesterday with a couple of councilmen from. Uh, the city of Dublin, and uh, it was Jerry Davis and Benny Jones, and I told them, I grew up, we grew up, we're not that far away in age, I grew up where no matter who you voted for, we still loved each other. Right. 
and we didn't argue, we didn't burn stuff down, we didn't hate each other. And now we're in a, in a situation where if, if you vote for Sally and I vote for Susie, there's no need to us hating each other. No. I mean, you have your right to vote how you want, and we should respect that. And we've, we've lost that somewhere along the way. Well, and I think a lot of it is because communication is so instant, and yeah. you know, and you can find people, and you can contact people, and you, you know, so many, so many people voice their opinions mm -hmm. that never have before. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's just the whole, and you've got people on both sides that yeah. are the extreme. That's right. Uh, and, and, um, and they, you know, and they, we just, don't they voice either. their opinion yeah. so much. We more. need to stay down the center of the road, I believe. Well, that's that's what that's what this political game is about is 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 a compromise. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I've told you this before, and probably on on this station before that, you know, if I if I have a bill and I'm trying to get something done, and you know, very rarely does legislation go through and it's unchanged. <laughs> You know, <laughs> somebody's going to change it, even if somebody that you think is an ally of yours is going to not. Like, you know, so if you get 10% of what you started out wanting, you've succeeded. And that's not and it all takes, bad. No, though. and it takes, a, yeah. you know, you can't change overnight. There are that's things right. like that that you can't change overnight. Right. Um, and, and it's, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Well, you're doing a great job at communicating. Let's stay on that topic a minute because. I don't uh, think I am sometimes, no, but thank you. you. Are. I mean, you're I, doing a great job. I hear that around the community because I get a new a newsletter from you. A lot of people get that newsletter. Uh, you post on Facebook a lot, you know, keep us up to date on that. So uh, I think you're doing a good job. Can we all do better? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, I, don't, I don't like to post stuff that's, that's really that I know is so polarizing. No, you keep you know, up to date it, on issues at it, hand. It, right. Yeah, I, I, I just, you know, and I'll, I'll like something here or there That's or do right. something, and I don't spend a lot of time But on I mean, in the media, legislative but, session, every week you're keeping us up to date. I know what's going on right. because I read the Atlanta Journal Constitution, I read Politico and things, and they're not always accurate, obviously, right. you know, especially when it comes to some of those Atlanta papers, but uh, at least from you, we're getting it from the this proverbial horse's really mouth. This is what's really happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I can trust that. So that's why I say you're doing good at communicating. But, hey, we got to take a break. We're going to talk on and on. Uh, Y'all stay with us. We'll be back right after this. We're so glad to be able to introduce Tabitha Mullis. Um, she is a new practitioner to our practice, longtime nurse, great experience. And um, we're very glad, Dr. Vega and myself, Alicia, and our staff to have her as part of our team to take care of all of your cardiology health care needs. And so I would like to introduce Tabitha and let her speak about her experience and also give you maybe some updated information on COVID regarding how to stay safe in this community at this crazy time that we're all experiencing. But thank you so much. Hello, my name is Tabitha Mullis. I'm a nurse practitioner at Double Meccan Cardiology. Um, been here since March the 1st, uh, which is when COVID started. Um, I have been a nurse practitioner for six years practicing. Uh, I have done internal medicine, pediatrics, and um, currently work at Southeastern Immediate Care, which is one of our local urgent care family practices here in Dublin, Georgia, uh, for the last three years. I have been a uh, nurse for 20 years. I uh, worked at Fairview Park Hospital for about 14 years. Um, I've probably worked in almost every area at the hospital, um, including med surge, pediatrics, um, cardiac cath lab, ICU, ER. Um, I did work one year at the Coliseum Hospital in CVICU, so I do have heart experience. I wanted to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and what our, our community has experienced with it. Um, we have been initiating uh, practices in our office uh, for social distancing. We have been um, evaluating patients uh, prior to coming back into our office setting with checking their temperatures and making sure that we are screening for any um, symptoms that could remotely be um, associated with that virus. Um, we have uh, taken extra initiatives to make sure that we follow up with those patients that have been tested and making sure that their symptoms are uh, improved before coming back into our office so that we're not reinfecting um, any of our um, elderly patients that we see here. Southern Pines is the testing center um, in Dublin that is doing testing 830 to 1. Um, for anyone that has um, been exposed to COVID-19 or feel like they're having symptoms. Um, some of the symptoms would include fever, um, 
runny nose, cough, chest congestion, shortness of breath. Also loss of taste or sense of smell um, is other um, symptoms that we have seen experienced by patients. Um, if you are concerned that you may have been infected, then contact your local provider for any further concerns and testing. I'm excited to join the staff at Double Macon Cardiology with Dr. Vega and Alicia Vega. Um, one of the most exciting things about our community is that we are an ch accredited chest pain center here at Fairview Park Hospital and our office is available um, seven days a week. Um, we have an on-call provider who can meet your needs if you're having any chest pain or shortness of breath or any problems. We would love to take care of you um, and we look forward to seeing you in our office. If you are new to our community, we are conveniently located on the campus of Fairview Park Hospital. Welcome back everybody, continuing our conversation with Matt Hatchett talking about uh, a variety of things uh, as we always do, but it's census time. Talk about how important it is to be counted. You know, that there's so much that, that is riding on the census and there's so much federal money that, that, you know, federal money funds a lot of the state, local, I mean, it comes, comes down like nobody really knows. I mean, it, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And your communities, you know, what your census, the numbers are depend on what, what kind of funds you get. Yeah. Uh, and also even with us in our redistricting and the population, uh, it, it can make it so that, you know, we have less representation or more representation, yeah. you know, and, and whether my district's a lot bigger or smaller. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's so simple. It takes five minutes. You know, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't take long. Or, or if you know the actual, if you get the actual, you know, thing yeah. you have to fill out, it doesn't take long. Yeah. Uh, just please, please yeah. do it. I mean, it, and it's ten years. I mean, it doesn't change for ten years. It's not so like you got to do it every week. Yeah. I mean, so please, you know, the door to door knocking, the door to door campaign, like we talked just a minute yeah. ago, the door to door, uh, is, I don't think is going to happen. So I mean, it's all. Mail, word of mouth, you know, internet. Uh, I hope so. we can do door to door because uh, right now, uh, you and I both know in Lawrence County, we're only at a 52 percent. Right. Only which half is better the people, than the last time I saw it. But so only half the people being counted. Right. Uh, there's millions, folks. Listen, that's millions, millions and millions of and millions of dollars right. that if we don't get, and we still want those services, you and I got to pay for them. That's money, what it comes the money's down going to. somewhere. Yeah, the money's coming from somewhere. Or we're going, going to yeah. or we gonna not have those services, whatever right. it might be. Uh, so we need it bad. We need that. So uh, please, I know uh, my wife and I, we got ours in the mail, and we mailed it back out the next day because literally it took, I, I'm going to say five minutes, let's say ten minutes, whatever. Uh, but it didn't take long. No, it's very basic. No. Of course, there ain't but two of us, so, you know. You, know, you didn't you, have to count too high. So. No, I, I got that. I know I went to East Lawrence, <laughs> but I, I did get, I married a Dublin girl, but anyway, she can count higher than I can. <laughs> uh, the governor, uh, he has come in and done an excellent job. Uh, I know some of his issues were he wanted to put a, a few, a little more tighter restrictions on assisted living communities. What did y'all do there? No, we had, a, it was a huge investigation, assisted living and nursing homes that the Atlanta Journal Constitution did. I mean, it was pretty deep. I, I don't know that I've ever seen an investigation like that. And uh, Sharon Cooper, who yeah. is our Wonderful chairman, person. chair lady of, of Health and Human Services, she is a very passionate lady mm -hmm. about her, her health care policy and what they do. She's an RN. Uh, her husband was a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, she's just, she really, jumped on that and, and took it in the, with the governor's blessing and, and it, it you know we we've we put some more requirements in on people working there and, and just little teeth and reporting some penalties and just really some things that needed to be done with the blessing of the assisted living community uh, they they basically were asking for help we beefed up the department that that is are the police mm -hmm. uh, and that was that was 
way late and you know needed badly. And I, I tell people, uh, I'm getting off a little bit here, but I mean, getting off point, but I mean, it's still on point that these, these different agencies and departments where there's problems like that and they, they don't, you know, we don't know everything. No. But they don't come ask for more fun, more whatever to, to do their job better. Mm -hmm. so, and I get department heads all the time, well, have you asked? And I, I haven't had one say they've asked yet. Mm. I mean, ask. You know, we know things change. We know yeah. you need, need, may need more help, but you've got to ask. You know, all you say is yes or no. Right. And I'm heard, okay, let's work to that. Yeah. You know, I, I get you. I understand. Yeah. But, but Sharon, I'm telling you, uh, I've been in her office about a few issues when I was on Capitol Hill, and trust me, if she's passionate about it and she oh, believes you need policing for assisted living or, or, or more Medicaid funding or whatever it is, uh, and I've been in her committee hearings. Uh, it, She'll dress if, you down in a minute. If you've never been <laughs> and watched the process work, uh, and it grinds slow, but it grinds slow for a reason, right. because you want to get it right. Right, and you want to give everybody the opportunity to, right. to comment. And you know, you, we all, we're all, every year, probably, probably quarter of the laws or stuff that we're, we're changing from what we did a year or two before because something wasn't, we right. hurt something or did something that nobody spoke up and said, hey, this is going to happen, and, and it happens. So we got to, you know, we didn't mean to do that. Let's yeah. let's change. Let's let's get it right. So I mean that that's what happens. But she is. She is a true champion for for the people yeah. and, and help, especially in the health care. Yeah, wonderful realm. person. And I was sitting here trying to call his name um, from Milledgeville. He was on that committee when I was in there. He's not in the legislature anymore or the Senate. Uh, his dad served for many years. Rusty kid. Milledgeville. Thank Rusty you. kid. I, I, I knew I remember the Rusty part. But he passed away. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, he was. Uh, he was like her. He was like Sharon to me, you know. If he believed in it, he fought. Uh, he was definitely not handicapped. He no, was not handicapped no. at all. Uh, just a wonderful person. Him but he was his, in a wheelchair. I mean, yeah, yeah he him was, and his dad both right. uh, uh, served our quite, served quite a our few state. stories about his dad. I actually paid for his dad. Oh really? And when I was, I don't know, probably ten, twelve years old. So. <laughs> just a couple I years. I don't ago. remember. I don't remember it much, but I know I did. But so his, what about hope? Is it solvent? I think hope is very solvent. Uh, I think, uh, as far as I know, we've we put more money into from the hope into hope, you know, mm -hmm. and from the lottery into hope over the last few years than we ever ever have. So are lottery ticket sales up, down, stale? I think they were they fell off a little mm -hmm. beginning of the right. COVID nineteen, right. and, and I think they're back up and where where they were that last I saw. I don't know right now. Y'all passed a law a few years ago where uh, you can get hope up to 10 years after you graduate. I think that's a good thing to do, and I think it's maybe accomplished what you set out to. I think I think it's I think we, if my memory serves me correct, it was a couple of years ago. There's so many people that are non-traditional students, mm -hmm. and they're working and they're still trying to get their their you know their bachelor's degree, and it just gives them the time to get it and not loot. You know, we had people that were almost there and they really used hope, mm -hmm. you know, to get their degree to improve their life. And then all of a sudden, gone. I got like two semesters or one semester to go and the money's gone and then they just don't get it. Yeah. And they're so close. So Financial I think hardship. there were a lot of people that were in that, that group and, it, and it's helped a lot. So. Well, and it helped a lot in our community at Oconee Fall Line. Uh, because so many people would not, it would not be possible for them to go and get a, that skill in whatever it is, truck driving or HVAC or whatever, uh, without that hope. I mean, those people want it. They're yeah. working for it and they want it. We've got so many people now that, you know, they, they finish high school and they go to college that first year and they're all hope qualified and they get hope and they don't get it after the first year. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they're not capable. It's because they're not they're not working, yeah. uh, and and that's that hurts the whole lottery program or the whole hope program. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's always discussion about tweaking, tweaking it. One of the things that always comes up is is 
you know, making it a retro versus a pre, you know, pre-award that you pay, and then you 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 get the grades, you buckle down, you work, then you get you get you know you get hope. And there's I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it, it's it's discussed every year. So. You know, some things are sold to the people that don't turn out the way they were sold. But I got to admit, Zell Miller, when he sold the citizens of Georgia, oh, it has done what it was told to do because done. people said along the way, don't vote for it because it's not going to continue to go to education. They're going to start putting it in the budget and doing other things. But uh, the elected officials have stayed true to it. Well, and it's it's changed. You know, it doesn't give you as much as it used to, right. but we wanted it to survive. But it goes to education. It goes to education. And, so. and we got to admit. With that said, and we both know that we have a problem with skilled labor. What are we going to do there? Well, we're, we're continuing to uh, increase the, they're called HOPE grants, the grants that are, that are through the technical colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we continue to increase the fields that are, 100% covered by a HOPE grant. So you can go for free if okay. you follow in the, I think we're, there's 12 different fields right now that you can go to. And we're constantly, that, that, that group is constantly evolving because the demand for different things changes. So, you know, and, and it's in times like these when people have, you know, hadn't been too long, but if, if you're gonna be out of your career, uh, you say, well, I wanna change my career. That's what this, this there's an ad, on your TV wall right now for Oconee <laughs> Fall Line Technical College. So I mean, there's that's what you know. That's what the technical colleges were designed to help help people get back on their feet um, and learn a new skill. And it's still doing it. Does it? You know, it's yeah. doing that all the time. Yeah, the so. technical system of Georgia is working good. It is. Uh, it's working really good. I, I believe. Uh, and and everything you see, there's accountability, and they're working hard and. It's not just OFTC, but uh, but throughout our the whole program system. and the and the the Quick Start program is like none other in the country, and that, that's mm -hmm. part of what keeps us being the number one state in the country to do yeah. business and what attracts people is because we'll do so much to help train these new employees for these new companies coming in. Yeah, yeah. Basically. People don't realize, and we got to take a break, but that's one thing. If we have someone come in, and if you're watching now, and you already have a company here and you want to start a new line or you want to do something different, you can go to Oconee Fall Line. They will write that project, write that program, and they will put it in. They will train your people, and, and, and that's how Georgia assists these different companies to do it. We've seen it right here. I've seen it with the chalk mine. I've seen it uh, uh, with different uh, industry here in town. So that's a great benefit, great benefit. We've got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. When the power's out, you're out of business. But with natural gas, with the city of Dublin, when the power's out, you can still cook on your gas stove or shower with your gas hot water heater or even fire up the grill. Plus save money every single day because natural gas costs half the price of electricity and propane. Start saving today with the city of Dublin natural gas. Call Brad Grimes at 277-5048 and you'll never be out of business with natural gas. To so many of you who count on us for your prescription medication needs, I'd like to thank you for your years of trust. To those who've yet to choose Tomlinson Pharmacy and Medical Park Pharmacy, I invite you to stop by and discover what makes us different. Medical Park Pharmacy is your family's one-stop destination for their prescription, health, and wellness needs. Our staff greets you with a smile and provides a level of customer care and expert service that truly sets us apart. Realizing your time is valuable, we'll always strive to have your prescriptions filled in minutes, not hours. Have a concern about a new medication? Our pharmacists are available to discuss the instructions and precautions. In addition, Medical Park Pharmacy also stocks a wide array of over-the-counter medications and medical supplies. With the drive through window, free delivery within city limits, and refills through our phone IVR website or mobile phone app, staying healthy has never been so convenient. At Medical Park Pharmacy, local owners Wendell and Wendy Smith provide hands-on service to ensure your satisfaction. We care about earning your business and strive to make you a regular customer. Come experience a difference. Visit Medical Park Pharmacy today. 
Welcome back, everybody. Well, we were talking about hope and education. Now, you got quite a bit of money, over $4 million from Middle Georgia State this time. We got $4.8 million for the Dublin Center to renovate, expand the area where the library is for nursing, the nursing program. It's, they've increased the nursing program now from up to, I think, 60 per semester, or per, I don't know if it's per semester, per right. year. But they're training 60 nurses. This is going to allow them to get up to 100 and maybe a little more. We need that. Year. And I, you know, I was really, you know, the, the school put it in there, what they wanted, money they needed, money they wanted. The chancellor has to choose, you know, projects from all the schools. Uh, that one wasn't on his list. We, we talked to the governor. We talked, you know, I talked to leadership. We got the 4.8 put in from our, from our standpoint. And it, it's, you know, it, to me, we need them here. We've got the VA. We've got a great hospital. We've got a great medical community. They all need nurses. And you know, it, it allows you to get that education. And you can start working here and get your education here and stay here to get it. You don't have to go out to get it. Um, so that, and you know, and we talk about this all the time, but there's, when we train all these medical professionals, you know, they go out of their community to get trained. Yeah. Doctors go to different places. And the, the odds of them staying here and coming back they fall once they move, you know, once they yeah. come, they don't, they don't necessarily come back. So if we can train them and get them trained here, yeah. the odds of them staying here, them here. Are, are much higher. So Let me ask you something. Speaking of that, you've been in office how long? This has ten, been 10 years. Okay. Now, I'm asking you, I've never asked you this question. Uh -oh. uh, do we benefit, our community benefit by You've been there 10 years. In other words, 10 years ago, could you have got that 4.8 million? No, sir. Okay, so no. that's, that's what. No, it, it, you know, as you build seniority, you, you move up in rank, you work, people know you, you help, you know, it's just, you know, you help other people get things done, and then you, you're able to, to get, you know, get more done. Yeah. You know, um, I was, you know, the first year I was fortunate to get some money for the county school system because right. there was a, a mess up in the, tax, uh, the whole tax right. you know, system you got been a problem. We got, we, you know, they wanted a lot more, we got a little bit. And, That's you know, right. and it was, this is a bond package, you know, it's still, still money, but it's put in the bond package. And um, it, being there definitely right. has it. Uh, being in those leadership positions. Has, has ability. And I thought that. you'd change your name because anytime I'm around the governor, he calls you Mr. Chairman. He, I, I call you Matt. I don't know if I'm is that? <laughs> he he's he's done that you know when he was secretary of state and I got elected chairman of the caucus he's called me chairman like that since that day and I call him governor you know which right. is what and that's you know what well, there that's up there that's what we all do that's you know right. but I mean it's I keep I keep telling you the others <laughs> I'm Matt okay I'm just I Matt. had to pick on you about that uh, so. it's, it's, but no it's an but, honor so. but the whole point I want people watching to understand by keeping you there. You know, so many people say, oh, we want term limits. Well, we have term limits. If we don't want somebody in, we can vote them out. Every, that's term Every limits. two years. That's right. Uh, which, that's a, another day, another show <laughs> about that two-year stuff. But I, I just think you're having to run all the time if you have opposition. But, but the point is, by you being there, we benefit greatly just like the $4.8 million coming in our community. Not only are we going to have more nursing slots, but... Uh, I'm gonna just throw name. Ben Hall is gonna be able to do the work. We're gonna keep people busy, and and you're gonna have construction workers, and it just benefits so many areas. Right. When we have a five million dollar uh, infusion of cash coming into our community. Well, and it's it's you know the construction jobs, you know, but the, the long term is that yeah. it's gonna it's gonna keep it's gonna help us grow our nurses, and they stay here and and and. And there's a shortage. I mean, we need them, and I don't think that's going away. Yeah. That's one of those. We're getting That's one of those careers. <laughs> well, that's one of those careers that you're still going to have to have yeah. personal interaction. Yeah. You know, I mean, the nurses, yeah. the you nurses are going to be online. taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this can't fight can't fight this pandemic online no. right now, and no. there and that that group right now is is working harder than they ever have. Yeah, so they're they're doing a great job. I think most of my life. Every session, long before you went in and probably long after you go out, 
I always hear gambling every every year. The, the the word gamble. We need to pass horse racing. We need to do this. We need whatever. What, did y'all talk about that this year? Oh yes, <laughs> every year. You know, I think there's been a bill every year, uh, and it's. You know, you've got right now. You have the casinos, you have horse racing, and you have sports betting, okay. uh, and all all three pieces. And there'll be a bill for one of them, a bill for two, you know. There's all these different things, and it it comes up. And I, you know, I keep thinking it's going to get. It, it's it's cause it, it requires a referendum. Right. You know, the voters have got to, people got to vote on it. Uh, and uh, I every year I think, well, it's going. You know, it's. it's about that time, it's going to happen. So how well, do you get it? But then, but then I, then you start listening to some of the people that have been around for a long time, some of the lobbyists and some of the people. It's been an issue for 30, 40 years, you yeah, know, it's, I knew it's since before hope. Around. I mean, yeah. it was even being talked about <laughs> before hope. So it's just constantly, constantly uh, is in discussion. You know, I, I tell people, you know, I've, I've every opportunity that I've had to vote on a bill or a resolution to let the people vote, I voted for that. Uh, and at right now, that's what I would do. You know, I, I would, if it ever came to a vote, I would vote to let the people vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and let, let that be, was, I don't ever, if it ever gets to that point, I don't, first, I don't think it would pass. I don't think the, the legislature would pass it. Uh, number two, I don't, the public may pass it, you know, but you're not, we're not going to be in Las Vegas. Uh, there's going to be a finite set of casinos. There'll be, you know, at probably one racetrack. You know, I mean, it, it's, you know, you'll have multiple places again. When the sports betting is actually going on now, uh, all over the internet, and it's the, the sports betting is occurring by people that are like 19 to 29 or 30 something. That's the group that is betting on the sports online now. And to, to implement that, I don't think it would require a, a, you know, a, a referendum, but that, that's not even, I mean, it, it would not bring that much, basically what you'd be doing is capturing some income that you really should be capturing now. Right. And I don't know how it that's escapes right. everything, but I mean, it, it's happening now. So. There's so many lobbyists. I know when I'm in Atlanta, <laughs> it's like, because everybody's got, you know if you're press or you know media, you know whatever. I, and I'm not even going to ask you how many lobbyists because I don't know if anybody oh, I knows. Know, no. I know. I don't know if anybody knows uh, or other than whoever. They have to be registered, I know. Right. But uh, how do you deal with all that? Because they're bending your ear over here. This one's bending your ear. Well, you get to know some that you trust and that you, mm -hmm. you know. And, and um, you know, they haven't. if. The ones that are are trustworthy and honest are the ones that have been there a while, mm -hmm. uh, and they they've built the respect. And you know, there every all I, I'm going to probably every occupation, every job is represented by a lobbyist. Yeah, there's a group that represents you, and they're all and and, and they are useful. Um, they they you know they educate us, and if they lie to us, you usually you know it and. Yeah. I don't forget it. Yeah. There's one that I will not. There's one person up there that offended me my second year. No matter uh, what they say. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't even. <laughs> I don't even let them. They want to come meet me. I said no. I'm not yeah. meeting with them. Um, and, you know you, and you you know they're for the most part they're they're telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it'll hurt them, but they're gonna tell you the truth. Well, um, and, and and it does educate you, don't it? Yeah. And there's so and there. There's both sides, you know, or two yeah. or three sides of yeah. the legislation sometimes, and, and and you've got to sometimes it's the lesser of evils, but yeah. uh, but but it's they're they they are needed, they are useful. That's right. Um, well, as long as you listen to the Georgia Association of Broadcasters. You see, know. see. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> uh, but you're right. There are you got you got you got them everywhere. You got them on both sides, and and. Uh, and we need them. They play a vital part right. in our process. We we can't know everything about everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And that's for, is, we're fortunate that we are a part-time legislature, so that most most everybody has a full-time career, and a lot of these careers are represented mm -hmm. by members. So you listen to them, uh, and even though, you know the you mentioned the uh, nursing home and the assisted living homes, you know, we've got 
a couple of members that, that have assisted living, run assisted living homes, and some of them are on the home health care. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they had input, and it, some of what we did hurt them. Yeah. It didn't hurt them, but it, they had to change the way they were doing business. Yeah. Um, so, it's, it's What's the hardest of, part of your job? Wow. Um, probably right now just in the leadership role, trying to uh, keep, keep the members informed. Uh, you can't keep them happy. Uh, but, but making sure that, that they're heard and that um, we're, we're, we're progressing in what we need to be doing and accomplishing. Um, you know, that, that's, that's probably, and that's something I don't have to do. But like you said earlier, that the money we got for the college, had you not, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to work, continue to work on legislation, continue to do things, and you're doing, I'm doing a leadership role that, that I'm involved with the whole caucus. Um, and it, it, you know, if I'm doing a bad job, it hurts, you know, so it, it can hurt us. And you talk about working part time. That may be up for debate sometime because <laughs> I know you and I, uh, we've had to change our times here and there because you got to do a conference call with the speaker. You got to talk to this committee. You got to go to Atlanta for this. So, you know, people say you only work, they only work a few days a year. Well, that's not really true because I know, knowing you like I do, and of course, Senator Tollison taught me a lot too. Uh, he worked all the time. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're, people call you all the time. Yeah. Uh, and which is, I mean, that, that's part of it. And, and we don't, we don't make what they make in Washington, regardless. No, of what people, no, you don't I mean, make 100000 a year. We make $17,300. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they make 170 <laughs> something. There's full time. I mean, that's yeah. all they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do a lot. I mean, we're, we're busy. Yeah. You know, we, we stay busy. Yeah. Um, and I, you know. And you have people. The process, okay, you have something in committee, it comes out of committee, uh, you, you'll go put it on the House floor. Now, who writes those bills? We How have, do they get written? We have a group, there's a legislative council, okay. and they're full-time lawyers mm -hmm. that work. There's probably, I don't know how many there are, maybe 30. Right. Uh, and they do all the, they I'll write, they the write the legislation. Or what? No, they're actually on the third and fourth floor. <laughs> okay. So they've got... They've got a whole kind of corner of the Capitol. Uh, so they're, and it's most a, of them have been there a while and they, they know, they know the ropes. They know yeah. how it is. It's very complex though, isn't it? It's very, not just. Uh, I've read more in the last 10 years than yeah. I ever read, especially laws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it, isn't it? That's part of it. Part of it. Okay, we're going to take another break, come back and wrap things up. Hi, I'm Matt Sapp, inviting you to come see us at Dexter Meat Company. For fresh hand cut meats, try our St. Louis ribs or our seasoned ribs. If you like sausage, you'll love our original, our Cajun sausage, or try our jalapeno cheddar, smoked, or ghost pepper cheddar sausage. That sure enough is hot. Our pork selection includes cubed pork, boneless chops, Boston butts, and more. We invite all our neighbors to come see us for the freshest cut of meat. Remember, we cater to. Call ahead and we'll have it fixed for you. Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday 8 to 6. First Lawrence Bank invites you to experience banking at its best. Whether you have personal or business needs, we're a full service bank big enough to handle all of your banking needs and small enough to provide you with that personal touch you've grown to expect from a community bank like First Lawrence Bank. Looking forward to your future, that's First Lawrence Bank in Dublin and Dexter, member FDIC. Welcome back, everybody. We need to wrap things up because uh, one thing about uh, you and I get together, we could probably do a Talk couple for several of, hours. Yeah, we could do a couple of two-hour specials or whatever. But uh, I want to wrap things up with two issues. One was I thought, well, both of them are really good, but uh, transparency in drug prices. My gosh, how long have we needed that? And I know you were a big part of that. Well, we we had three or four bills. Well, there were probably 10 or 20 bills that were introduced, but we had, I think, four that actually made it across the finish line that really, hopefully, will really um, bring, like you said, more transparency to drug prices. You know, you've got the drug manufacturers, which, which 
you know, they're producing a product and they're setting a price on that product and, and we're, we use them. Mm -hmm. um, then you have these creatures that are in between that are called pharmacy benefit managers and they're a middleman. Well, the, they were originally created to, to, to reduce the price and help, help everybody or, or all these different entities maneuver through your insurance programs and you know anybody that was the payer. Well, somewhere along the way that benefit was lost and we've uncovered a lot of uh, money that's uh, they're making money on just being there uh, and a lot of abuse and we're because of the legalities and the contracts involved, we've really had to get creative and, and create some, some legislation that's going to help us put a stop to a lot of the, just what I, I think is fraud. And I, I use that word with the governor. He said, that's a pretty, that's a pretty strong term there, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. And I said, oh, I believe it. And, you know, and, and there's, there's four bills out there that address that, that I carry, actually, you know, champion one of them, which creates a, a commission that's going to actually be allowed to look and review these contracts and, and look and, you know, ask the questions and ask stuff that you, you think should be being done, but because there's so much, the system's so busy, and, and yes, the, the departments don't have the manpower, but another set of eyes to, to get in there and ask the questions and look at it and, and not give away trade secrets and not give away stuff but but find look and see what's what's going on here because yeah. because our our health care the care management organizations that we have um, that that are you know help trying to help our people that are on you know our own medicare or medicaid and and the state health benefit plan you know there there's there's just a little more oversight that, we need there. There, the, it counts for billions of dollars every year in our budget, and we need to be looking at it harder. And we've, you know, we've chomped away every yeah. year, and they find another loophole that they don't have to do this or don't have to do that. I think we, I think we came up with some filled all the stuff. holes. Yeah, and I, I'm sure there's probably going to be some lawsuits. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I, we've got to do it. I mean, it's just Look you, you talk, you talk to some of our hometown pharmacists. And they'll talk to you forever about it because yeah. they they are they are selling product and losing money on it. Oh yeah, and you, you can't stay in business today. That's that. not the way. And the big me. guys are trying to yeah. take over, and and hopefully we've we've addressed that, and, and hopefully the governor's going to sign that legislation. Well, so. I've been educated on it by uh, Wendell Smith. If anybody knows, he knows. You know, to be a local small time uh, pharmacist. Uh, uh, and that's not fair for anybody, no. you know. If you pay a dollar, you ought to make a profit off of it. Well, or if you if you if you pay a dollar, or you know, you pay a dollar for it, and you think then all of a sudden they tell you no, you couldn't charge yeah. that for it. We're going to take some of your money away. Yeah, I'm like, that's not. And another kind of, problem. See, that cost us all. Everybody it, makes your it, insurance makes everything yeah, go up. It does. It, it costs everybody. And believe me. Uh, when I saw what our increase in insurance this year, I don't even know how me and my wife paying it. And, and people watching now, we're having trouble. Uh, uh, and we're not the government. You know, if we make $100 a week, we can't spend $150 a week. You know, we, yeah. we have to live within those means. Another place that uh, I know y'all been working on, but uh, it's like, for example, I had an MRI at the hospital. Well. My insurance covered it, but somebody that read it was out of network. Now, see, those things are costing us money, and I know y'all are trying to tackle well, that, we, too. We addressed that issue, too, surprise billing. It was mm -hmm. House Bill 888, I believe, and it, it, we have it's no law. I have yeah, no I mean, choice it, who reads it. It's, it's, I think we've taken care of that. I, I think so, too. I, mean, I read it, it's, that. Yeah. It's, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty detailed. I was so and glad y'all did that. We, uh, that. That was an interesting bill. And, I had some interesting uh, committee meetings on yeah, that one. So, well, but, it, it, it was, but you're fighting for the little man. I right. mean, uh, every viewer watching us now, I'm telling you, I see y'all out there nodding your head, yeah, because that hurts us. And we right. have no control over right. who reads a, a, a whatever test, CT, MRI, whatever. So 
But thank you all for doing that because that, those are things, and I, I'm so glad we have a list. I wish Washington would work like y'all. You know, actually go in there and do something, you know. Uh, and that's one good thing that's about right. y'all. You go in there, you, you roll up your sleeves, you get in there, and um, uh, you don't always get it, but uh, you got to at least try. Right. And, we, you know, we have to balance the budget. So. Yeah, we've got to. We that's the law. We can't, we can't print any money. Yeah, that's the law. Okay, last thing, um, and I saved this for last on purpose, but hate crime law this year. Yes. Long overdue. Very long. We were the... So I guess there's three states now that don't have a hate crimes bill. And, you know, it, it adds some penalties if you're convicted of a crime. And then it, you have to prove, number one, that you're guilty of the crime. But then the, the prosecutor has to prove that you, 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 did, you, know, you performed that crime or committed that crime because of hate mm -hmm. toward the individual for, I think there's 10 or 12 reasons. Uh, and, and, you know, it was very... Very contested. I, you know, I, you, when you, when it came up, you had asked me. I said, "Let me tell you now," because people, you know, people were looking at this. The first time that bill came through the house, which was over a year ago, because the sessions are two years. You know, a bill's alive for two years before it dies. I was picking up my daughter from flying in from Japan yeah. at you know the cab, Peach Street cab in Atlanta, and I wasn't at the Capitol on the floor. It was a night, you don't, and we never know when a bill, we That's really right. don't know when a bill's coming up. I, I mean, know. we can have an idea. Yeah. But so when I had the opportunity to vote on it again, I voted on yeah. I mean, it. There was no question I was yeah. voting for it. I was concerned about that one because I was getting calls. You know, you get all kind of calls at the station. Well, and I like to know where you stand because at least I can help there. Well, with the, with all that's, you know, that bill, we passed it. The House passed it. It was in the Senate. And I, you know, I don't know if they were going to act on it or not, but with what's occurred between that time, between the time we were in and out with, with uh, Ahmaud Arbery, and, and, and that was just... Disgusting. Just, yeah, I mean, it's just... Yeah, yeah. And, and if a case ever deserves that, then that, Amen, that deserves brother. it. So, Amen. I mean, it's just not right. No. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've handled that, it's done. Um, so it... Well, long overdue, like yeah. we said, but hey, it's done. Uh, and there's no place in society for, you know, for hate, I no. mean, and, and to commit a crime like that. I understand, I don't condone it, but I understand self-defense and, and fit of rage and all that, but to kill someone because of whatever, you hate them for whatever reason, right. and I'm, I'm glad you didn't just put one or two in there. You've got a wide variety of right. things. So, right. uh, well, y'all, it might have been a long session, but it looks like you got a lot done, didn't you? I think we got a good bit done. And in the, the second part of the session, when we when we went back, we had to vote. Uh, you know, down. The, we didn't use our machines, and right. it was a little slower. <laughs> uh, but it, I think it slowed it down a little bit, so you actually knew a lot more about what you were voting on. You know, it just it slowed the whole process down. But we still got. A, I think we got a good bit done. Not everybody got everything they wanted, me included. But um, it it. It's a process. How much gets done in the the cloak room? Is that is that, is that what you call it? The little room to the side? What do you call that? I don't room? know. Any room? The any room? Any room? Yeah. There's a little bit of discussion. A lot a of it, of... a lot of it takes place <laughs> in the speaker's conference room. <laughs> I'm sure. So, you, you know, know that's that's the, the thing. There. You know, in the house, we have a ball. You know, the boss is the speaker, right. and he's another. He's a rep, just like I am. He's elected in a district, just like me. But we elect. You know the leader, and he is the leader. The Senate is a little different because uh -huh. you've got the lieutenant governor that's not elected by the Senate. And then the Senate has its own leadership too. So I mean, they're, you know, they're, they have two or three leaders, which can cause a problem at times. But we have, you know, all, all the if the speaker doesn't want it to happen, it, it's not going to happen. Okay, so. I, I asked you what the hardest part of your job was, but I want to know. What's the best part of your job? And I've, you asked me that before. The best part is being able to help people. You know, it, you get, you know, we've gotten a lot of calls in the last few months, a lot of unemployment, and, and that's, you know, I'll just say that that has been a, a nightmare, not for me, but not, not but for the, you know, for people that are needing it and for our department that's handling yeah. that. You know, they've had 10 years of, 10 years of work in yeah. two months. Yeah. And, and I, 
it's not an excuse, but it, I understand why they may not be getting to everything as quickly yeah. as they need There's to. There's not enough staff, and Pat, a, like here, Pat's in them have oh, done she's a great been, job. Yeah, I mean, and it's just, there's, a lot of it was totally new. Yeah. New types of unemployment that we've never yeah. done before. Yeah, the federal So there had, to, yeah. there had to be processes put in place, and it, you know, and I, I, we've had a lot, and, and I think most of them we've been on handle. It's taken a while, you know, and, and uh, but it, there, that's something. But just you know, being able to, you know, I had a call this week from somebody, uh, parent that's in a nursing home, and they were having an issue, and I made a couple of phone calls, and it, it helped tremendously. You know, it just, Wonderful. just, you know, it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, but it is, and it helps, and it's that's what makes. But yeah. when somebody says thank you, you you know that's you what know makes where, it worth it. And I had this conversation yesterday with our homeless ministry. Uh, we know where the resources are, but the people living under the bridge or out here homeless, they don't know where to go get those resources. So it's well, that way with you. I may not know, but you know where those state resources are, so you can kind of streamline it. So that's where I, I think you help a lot. Last question, and I got to get you on tape on this one. Uh -oh. uh, he's going to hate me for this one. So when are you going to run for governor? <laughs> I am not running for governor. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm no, archiving this. No. So I'm saving this. You can play it back <laughs> as much as you want. Come on. No. That's not even out there yeah, in the horizon. I have people, I've had several people, you know, that say that to me all the time. No, I'm, I'm, I'm you happy? I'm, I'm, I'm good where I am. Well, but um, you do, uh, and you're not going to say it, but uh, you do do a good job. You're very accessible. You communicate well, uh, and uh, you always, you might not answer first time, but you always call me back. You. you know, you're very accessible. Uh, and I can say the same thing, and I'm going to miss him so much, uh, Jimmy Pruitt. Uh, I'm going to miss him because he's always been, well, just like you. Uh, but I understand, I understand, you know, why he's uh, stepping nice. down. But uh, I know you, you've enjoyed him being in y'all's delegation uh, also. Jim, Jimmy's been good, and, you know, Danny Mathis too, took Bubba Rep's place. And, and uh, you know, in, in – in two years, that may all change. Yeah. You know, it probably will. Yeah. You know, because the districts will 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 change, um, and it, it's it's been fun to work with them. We got Robert Pruitt, who is going to be taking Jimmy's place. They don't spell their last name the same, but they're like fifth or sixth cousins <laughs> or something. He said. They're distant, really related, okay. but he's a successful businessman in Eastman, and he, Good. I look forward to working with him. Good. Okay, thank you, brother. We always, thank you for, for always having this outlet. Yeah, we we, uh, and we always go over our lot of time, don't we? Yeah, we do, But uh, I guess. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, You can brother. cut some of it out. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. okay, thank you, Matt. Thank you all so much for joining us right here on TV 35.